You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. There, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy wacka 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 doodle first day of spring Wednesday. Or at least last I knew today was the first day of spring. God only knows, my week has been so fee just simply because, simply because. <laughs> Oh, well, you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM Radio.xyz site, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, the RLM Spreaker Channel, and later on the RLM YouTube, RLM BitChute, and I guess on um, iHeartRadio, and I have no idea where else Grammy's got me going out, but I'm scaring the hell out of people. <laughs> You know, that's probably why the world's going to hell, because I'm scaring the hell out of the people, and so it's just kind of muttering around the world going, now what do we do? Oh, well. <laughs> it is a wackadoodle Wednesday, though. So, you know, I'm going to be a little on the whack side, like today is any different from any other day. But let me see. I got to say hey to lots of people out there, just because, just in case, you might be paying attention. Don't you know? Uh, thank you, Barman and Grimmy, for tweeting me out over there on Twitter. I truly do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I got 849 followers or stalkers, however you wish to put that, over here on Twitter. I'm I'm gaining followers, and yet, for some silly reason, it feels like I'm being shadow banned on a lot. <laughs> Most of the time, I think I just post stuff just to make me feel better, which... Okay, to be quite honest, that is why I post it. Because <laughs> I just plain got to get it out. Because if I don't get it out, I'm going to pop. And there would be Grammy bits everywhere. And that would not be a pretty thing. So, um, hi everybody over on Twitter or anybody on Twitter that's listening in. And, by the way, if you are listening on the Spreaker link, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. And, uh... Oh, and I'll soon be on Spotify. Holy smokes, I'll be infecting the world. <laughs> this could be fun. Actually, it already is. But, um, yeah, so hi, um, anybody on Twitter. And if you, once again, if you're listening on Spreaker, honey, I would love to be able to chit-chat with you on Spreaker as well. But I'm out here in the boonies. Tin can, kite string, and duct tape is what I call internet. So, uh, you're lucky I can do, or maybe you're not lucky. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Grimmy says he saw the matches in my hand. Nuh-uh, honey. Nuh-uh. I, didn't hand, I was handing them to Rob Works so he could fire up the bubbler. Yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't start the fire. Not really, but, you know, someone else did start it, and I, I went and got me a little torch, <laughs> and I started torching shit. Ah, moving along. Yeah, I'm chitty-chatting over here in the chat, by the way. And, yeah, if you come into the chat, um, and you use my, my chat name, which is Graham Z, um, yeah, my little thing will flash. I'll be a flasher, <laughs> and then I'll respond to you, or I might ignore you, just depending on the mood I'm in, or if my evil twin is playing or not. Just saying. Okay, now that I said hey to Twitter, over here on Minds, thank you, Barman and Grim, for letting them know over here on Minds. I did remind it. Reminder on Minds. Isn't that rather cool? On Fakie Book, I didn't tell anybody on Fakie Book, but I did see this posted by The Higher Perspective, and this is true. This is a true story. My mind is like an internet browser. Seventeen tabs are open, four of them are frozen, and I don't know where the music is coming from. 
but um bum bum but yeah the music's always playing and I, I honestly at night when I go to sleep I've always got a song playing through my head and I have a hell of a time getting you know changing <laughs> changing the song or just turning off the the little music box going on in my head because man there are times when it's like really shut up I want to go to sleep Okay, over here on realliberty.org, I see Bob Renner is playing, as well as Rob Works and Grimner. Donna was on here not too long ago, as well as Late In Again, and the lovely Miri B and Sound Minds. All kind of people are logged in over here, though. Off and on, in and out. Um, and then... Then, then... Dun, dun, dun... Over here on Freedoms Network. Dot com that effing site don't you know thank you once again grim for letting everybody over here know as well that i am live and in poison and uh let's see who else is over here playing late in is playing over here and so is bob renner and cowboy tech cowboys always hearing pleasant voices and i keep telling him don't ever get your hearing checked or changed please for me <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Keep Supreme Court justices at nine. Hootie doody whatty. They're just, wow. Wow. Ooh. Sean says, my review of the book QAnon, An Invitation to the Great Awakening. Uh-oh. Apparently, Sean says the F word. I say the F word quite often when um, properly inspired Sometimes I don't even have to be properly inspired. It just falls out. But, you know, it's it's like a a verbal exclamation point, you know. Sometimes you just plain got to get that exclamation point out there. Kind of like, it's magic. Fuck you. Okay. Now, over to the place where you need to be. If you want to pick on me, give me static. I see you, Moosey. <laughs> She's surfing new egg. I, yeah, that's, I need to, when I surf, I make sure that I don't have any of my, yeah, because I have a tendency to spend money. So I just kind of leave all of my access to electronic money way far away. And I just, I'm too lazy to get up out of my chair. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's, it's called making sure I do not have buyer's remorse. That's what it's called. Okay, over here in the RLM chat, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who, like I said, is always hearing pleasant voices. And looky there, Grimner, the RLM god, is here, as well as a lovely Moose Girl, who was having some issues with computer, but looks like she's gotten it straightened out. Booyah for you, Moosey, and you didn't have to go into biatch mode or nothing. Booyah! I call that bonus round i also see the lovely kate is here hey kate how you doing sweetheart how sings down in florida uh backward bracket dc is here as well as anti and asmo hi asmo asmodius asmo chalcedony is also in the chat as well as yours truly i be don c and looky there meister bra and meister bra thank you once again hon i started following that link over there on twitter as well hon Good job. And if I know of anybody in the area, I will send them your direction. I also see Ponder Gander is here. That's an alter ego for someone who is, I'm sure, logged in farther on down the list. Yeah, yeah, he is. I also see the lovely rain is here. I don't want any rain, honey. I want it to dry out because I just got my mower back from the repo mower repair guy. And now I want to mow. <laughs> And within like three or four mowings, I'll be going, God, I got to go mow again. Yeah, I know. You guys are all tired of hearing it. Oh, well, it's that season again. Um, Rob Works is also here, and he fired up that bubbler. Booyah. Thank you, Rob, for the cybernetic hit. The lovely Romes is here. When in Romes, wear a toga. <laughs> Hi, Vanna White, you wonderful letter turner, you. And thank you for letting me get the duck. I'm at 91 ducks now. Booyah! My duck army is growing. Vinny Victor is here. That's, the, that's another alter ego of the wonderful Vinny of Oz. Well, okay, he's from Ark. He's the wonderful Vinny of Ark. 
Do you know how big a cube it is, Vinny? Also, I see Weather Dork is here. You know, the weather lady. Or a weather guy. I don't know. I haven't I haven't decided if Weather Dork is a guy or a girl bot. I'll 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 decide eventually. Or maybe not. And even if I don't, that's a decision. See? See how cool that works? I also see Beth is here. Hi, Miss Beth. How you doing? As well as Phantom, who did my wonderful intro. Once again, thank you, Phantom, for that. Um, Anti is here. Another Anti. He's got an underscore going on. I wonder what's going on after Anti. Hmm. Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How you doing, sweetheart? Um, I'm sure I could find someone to mow my lawn, Frumpy, but it's a riding mower. And so, you know, it is kind of fun to drive around. It's when you have to dump the bags that sucks. <laughs> but other than that, oh well. I just like to piss and moan and bitch and groan sometimes. I also see Soikles is logged in. Hey, Soikles, how's things over in Denmark? As well as, looky there, Colfax 101 is here. And Cyborg Noodle, may you be touched by his noodly goodness. Dakota from way up north is here. As well as Frumpy. Hey, Frumpy. I have an article that I might get to. And if I don't get to it tonight, I will get to it on Friday that I think you will truly enjoy. Um, Gromit is also here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. How's the knee doing, sweetheart? I hope it's doing better. You know, getting rid of that hitch in your get along. JJ's, na na na, JJ's that wonderful Scottish feller who's always got a breeze blowing up his kilt or maybe a breeze coming from his kilt. If, it, if it's coming from his kilt, run away, run away. Oh, anti grew a tail. You know, that's one of those things. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and um, we were talking about evolution and the whole Darwinian theory and all that fun crap. And he said, you, and I told him, I said, why in the hell, you know, if we supposedly evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? To which he said, you know, if we really did evolve from monkeys, why do... Why don't we still have a tail? And so we were talking about all of the wonderful things that you could do if you still had a tail. All kind of way cool things. Or at least way cool things to us. And so there, all of you um, evolutionists, why didn't we keep a tail? I want to know. Inquiring minds time. Oh, well, moving along. Kozu is also in the house, as well as KISS. KISS, does that stand for Keep It Simple, Stupid? Because I know there's a lot of times I tell people, you here, let me blow you a kiss. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. I also see Papa Papa Pawn Sauces in the chat, as well as Sock Puppet. I got another sock, uh, sock monkey from my mother from going to visit her on Monday. And yay, I have good news about that too. I will tell you here and just, I already shared it in the chat, but I want to, I want to tell you anyway, because it's way cool. I also see Tech Man is here as well as Uno, the one, the only Uno, Uno. And to round out the crew, Van Meter. Hey, Miss Donna, how you doing, hon? Okay, and over here on the red pill, for those that are not hanging out in the real liberty media, I also see Apostle is here, as well as F. Canella, and Juana Taco, and Katie Troxel, and Quantum, Quantum Cuppa, Quantum Cuppa what? Quantum Cuppa, because I don't have it. Oh, Quantum Cupcake. Okay. And Soily. Hi, Soily. Okay. Now that I've said hey to all of them people, guess what? Guess what? Um, pants would be weird with a tail. No, you just, pants would just be designed to where there would be a tail hole. <laughs> oh my God, my mind just went somewhere where it probably shouldn't have gone. Oh, yeah, well, y'all know I have a very vivid imagination and sometimes it just really kicks into overdrive when I should just tell it, take a chill pill, take a chill pill. Um, hi, James Enor. Um, yeah, there you go, James. Okay, let me see. What's this? 
Yay, 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 yay. Okay. I'm checking out another site. Don't you know? Okay. In any case, my news from my mother or with my mother. I went down to um, go to a doctor's appointment with her. Last time I went to a doctor's appointment with her was with her old doctor. The one that she normally went to was on maternity leave. and Or not necessarily maternity leave, but she'd adopted a baby. And so you still get to have that uh, time at home bonding kind of stuff even when you adopt a baby. So she was, um, mom had to be put with her old doctor. And the old doctor was a condescending, <clears throat> we'll just leave it at that. I have lots and lots of expletives for that one. Uh, and apparently, um, some of the other siblings of mine that have had the uh, displeasure of meeting this individual share the same expletives that that I hold for her. In any case, um, I had a little verbal tete-a-tete with this woman, and she pretty much bullied mom, which I didn't realize until I talked to my brother, or one of my brothers, that that is actually a violation of federal law to verbally um, intimidate an elderly patient into taking medication, which is what she was doing. In any case... Uh, three months later, I get to go to uh, a doctor's appointment with my mother again. And bless your heart, the lovely Kate gave me some ammunition, which worked amazing. You should have seen the look on the doctor's face when I lowered that boom on her about uh, the uh, recall, two recalls of the uh, high blood pressure medication that they had my mother on because they had found that they had been contaminated, uh-huh, wink, wink, with um, a known carcinogen. And when I told her that there was not only one, but two recalls within the past month of this specific high blood pressure medication, she said, well, you know, we can, and I said, no, I do not trust companies that do this kind of stuff, you know, that it has to come up as a recall. How did, how did this contamination happen? If their QC isn't good enough to keep that out of a quote-unquote medication, then no, no thank you. And um, between that and some of the ammunition that my brother gave me about statutes concerning intimidation of elderly patients into taking medications, um... And my mother saying that, you know, I have a couple of daughters that are RNs and my children, you know, are this. And she said, this daughter, which is my oldest daughter, is very vocal. And I said, I am a researchaholic, by the way. And uh, so they pretty much backed down. So mom is no longer on the blood pressure medication. And on top of that, that means that she's no longer taking the diuretic that they put her on because blood, pre blood pressure medication has a tendency to cause people to retain water. Even though they know in their medical file that my mom runs on the, um, um, oh crap, now I can't think of the word, um, dehydrated side all the time. You know, she has issues with being dehydrated, and yet they put her on a diuretic, which made her even more dehydrated. And dehydration is something that does cause uh, or is a contributing factor to um, dementia and confusion and dizziness. It affects the brain. So... They put her on this diuretic because they had her on, and it's just one of those hand-in-hand -hand things is what she tried to explain to me. And I said, did you not look in your files? Did you not re remember? Well, yeah, yeah. So she's no longer on the diuretic. And just to let you know, it's a domino effect with these med kind of things. They also put her on a, uh, acid, a prescription acid reflux medication that does not necessarily have a good reputation either because she was getting heartburn from the diuretic. So giving her a pill to deal with the side effect of another pill and then giving her another pill to deal with the side effect from that pill. 
and now she's not on any of them. Now she's taking supplements, and I made sure that her little supplement thingy for the week is all filled up and ready, so she is, instead of taking that nasty juju stuff, she's taking ginkgo biloba, and she's taking vitamin E, and on top of her, um, she's also taking a calcium supplement with vitamin D3 in it, and she's taking a multivitamin, so she's just on supplements, except for her thyroid meds, that she has been on those thyroid meds forever, forever, and she's, she doesn't want to, and it's the lowest dosage that you can be on, so I'm not going to argue with her over that one, because that one actually doesn't have a too horrible bad, even though she doesn't like taking pills. I don't either, but now she's on supplements instead of, so she's been given what she needs to, um, help her body heal itself, basically, because there really is, and I got to put this out there because there's so many people out there that say, this will cure this and this will cure that. And I've come to realize, and I used to be one of those, you know, I got to put that out there, but you know, there really nothing out there cures anything, but there are things that assist your body in healing itself and your body is designed to heal itself. And so educate yourself eat right, get the proper supplements if you're not getting them in your regular diet, or if you don't trust the source of your diet and you don't have the ability to grow cleanly yourself, then you get some supplements from places that you trust. So, but get your body healthy by feeding it what it needs to heal itself. No such critter as a cure, but there is such a critter as things, tools, foods, the natural pharmacy that helps your body heal itself. So now that I've done my little diatribe there, welcome bas back, lovely moose girl. Um, I don't know, Beetle, if that Pelosi story is real, but it does not shock me one wee bit. <coughs> Excuse me, because, um, yeah, San Fran, if it ain't the booze, it's the Botox. So it's a double babi babi for San Fran Nan. That woman is messed in the head. That's all there is to it. So now to the one that I wanted to get to this evening. Definitely get to this evening. It's from ZeroHedge.com from the 15th of this month. And it's five reasons we're in this mess. Now it's authored by the Hard Scrap hard scrabble farmer via the burning platform and uh, a lot of virtual ink has been spilled in the past couple of years trying to home in on the source of our discontent in the past half century or so we've experienced quite a few disruptions to the system exposing deep rifts that have plast or that were plastered all over more than a few times in the past now, America is nothing if not the land of skeletons in the closet. And the more that people are told what they may or may not consider by their betters, yeah, so they think they're betters, the more threadbare the excuses become. And man, <laughs> they have become so thin, they're beyond anorexic. I'm thinking they're getting to be nanoparticle thin. Now, everything has a reckoning. It is the immutable force of creation that established the physics of all things, every action, and all that jazz. So, we're in the midst of a very, very dangerous time. Anyone who still believes in the power of the vote to reconcile our differences has not been paying attention. The time for campaigning things or campaigning things away has come and gone and there will never until this conflict settles matters in flesh and blood be a common to or a coming together of one side with the other it is purposeless at this point to reason with one another pretty much sides have been clearly drawn and like a family dispute everyone knows where everyone else stands on the matter and I got to add to this, people are not going to see anything from 
even vaguely close to your perspective or point of view if they're not ready to. So all you can do is put the crumbs out there and when they're ready, they'll trip over them or they'll pick them up. But if they're never ready, they'll just sidestep them and keep on going their happy-go-lucky way. Now the premise is simple. There are those who want the heritage American of the past and those who want another country altogether. Those aren't views that can be reconciled and both sides are convinced that they hold the moral high ground. The conflict has a neo-theological feel to it and it has become a religion to many or a religiosity if you will. The writing of historical wrongs on people living in the past and the only solution is final. There's no compromise with someone who wants you gone. You know, I think those people that say that the population needs to be decreased and, and you know, most of you, they volunteer most of us to be the ones that contribute to that decrease. I say, if you want the population decreased, go ahead. I'll, I'll follow you in my own time. There you go. So, what most of us do not consider, however, is that all of this, every epic meltdown and scandalous exposure is all a part and parcel of a perfectly natural cycle that's been going on for as long as mankind has existed. It's what we do. Maybe if we begin to look at it from that perspective instead of taking it poisonally, we'll be able to keep the wheels from falling off our personal lives even if everyone else loses theirs. Number one, conflict is why we're successful as a species. Human beings are soft. We aren't fast. We've got no armor, spines, poison, or spray to defend ourselves from attack. Our hearing and sense of smell is marginal at best, and we've got neither fangs nor claws. It takes us more than a decade from our birth to be even nominally able to defend ourselves, and when it gets dark, our eyesight leaves us virtually blind. And yet, we're still here. More than that, we've become the dominant species on the planet. Every survival mechanism, every tool, every improvement we've come up with has been the result of our never-ending conflict with climate, predators, and each other. Our larger brains and cooperative natures worked wonders in coming up with things to equalize our weaknesses by turning inanimate objects into implements of conflict. Long periods of peace for collectives are like long periods of uh, um, indolence for indol individuals. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I'll get that spit out eventually. Now it weakens us and it leads to corruption of our spirit as human beings. Yeah. Well, and it allows corruption to take over the narrative as well. Now, if there's no conflict, we create it. Never has it been more clear than in our modern era. Things are going so well that people are ready to engage in a revolution if people fail to use the preferred pronoun. This conflict isn't something we can avoid. <coughs> and it is, in fact, something we actually need. Number two reason why we're in this mess Human beings manifest reality. It's true. Large numbers manifest it in a way that is supernatural. Events like Burning Man or the Battle of Khan or Cana, those swirling masses of Mohammedans endlessly circling an obelisk of stone, or a Taylor Swift concert. Those are not events made up of individuals. That is a beehive swarm, an ant colony, or a migration of butterflies. The shared joy or bloodlust that takes place on the scale of tens of thousands or even millions 
is an incomprehensible concept to the individual. The anger that the current body politic feel for whatever bugbear they embrace is magnified and ever expanding anger that becomes societal in its dimensions until it cannot be contained not any longer by the traditional methods of civility and lawful order or just throw away the lawful just order now what has happened isn't anyone's particular fault but we all play a role in creating it by buying a ticket to the show every tweet Every vote led inexorably to this place, and once the collective golem has some life breathed into it, it takes on a form and life of its own, and it will use us for its own ends. Number three reason why we're in this mess. Cycles apply to everything. There's no living thing under the sun that can escape this reality. We are born, we grow, we age, and we die. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Lather, wash, repeat. Human beings get to take the ride, but they don't get to choose where they get on and off. Human cycles float along in fourth turnings and they allow them like a blueprint or they follow them like a blueprint. Now some get the best part of, of the run and some get the caboose end. And, and you get what you get and you don't get upset or as my granddaughter says, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> There's a lot of people I have to say that to every time I see them. It's like, you get what you get, darling. Don't throw a fit. Now, we just happen to live in an um, eponymous, eponymous, really? We live in a fourth turning, is what we do. So please keep your hands inside and enjoy the ride. Don't stand up, you'll lose your head. Trust me, because that bridge is awful low. The fourth reason that we're in this mess is it's overdue. It is long overdue. We've been putting up and, and kicking dirt in each other's faces for entirely too long. So let's be brutally honest. This really comes down to a battle between good and batshit crazy. <laughs> Pretty much. It's never polite to be haughty or, su or superior. But in this case, we can make an exception. Sometimes a culture can go off the rails just a little bit and it spells the end of the entire economy and power base. Think tulip bulbs, for example. Other times, it's Pol Pot's killing fields. In most cases, the trigger is unimport unimportant, but the underlying problems, either of stress and endless poverty like in Cambodia or the excesses of too much of a good thing like the guys in wooden shoes went through. Like a good vomit after a night of heavy boozing. It's best to get it out of the system. So let's all do a collective pray to the porcelain god. Or call for dinosaurs. Or tell someone you'd rather buy a Buick. <laughs> However you wish to put that. Now, in our case, a decade after decade of indulgent behavior, increasingly deranged public mores, and the atrophy of comfort have turned us into a bloated and corpulent monstrosity in need of an intervention. America is the house that's been left to the teenagers for the weekend, and the parents' names are Menendez. This time around, the parents have gotten lazy and the kids have been deranged by too much of everything and they both have had enough. There's no telling which side winds up victorious, but just about everyone on both sides of the divide are ready to rumble. In other words, the tough love is getting ready to be dispensed, don't you know? And finally, the fifth reason we're in this mess it's all good, man. It's all good. So while no one knows how things are going to work out in the end, 
the odds are always in your favor. Civilizations rise and fall, states and nations come into existence and vanish with hardly a trace. Hmm, Tataria comes to mind. That one's been coming up a lot lately. But we're still here. Just as humanity goes on when someone dies, individual lives go on amidst the ruins of fallen empires. Chances are, most people will come out the other end. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. I think that's a song. <laughs> now, it's always wisest to prepare for every eventuality, and even then, there are no guarantees. But those who pay attention to the signs and stay above the fray stand a much better chance of breaking on through to the other side. And if not us, hopefully our offspring. It's a bummer to have to watch the end of what was a pretty badass civilization come tumbling down because my feelings, my roads, but, but climate change. Yeah, sure beats a super volcano or an asteroid strike. Mm, not to say that those are not a possibility. So this is our time, and this is our conflict, and it will not be denied. We all must accept the role that we've already pl played laying up piles of faggots at the base of the pyre. And we must also live with the consequences. When things go medieval, it's going to require a different mindset than the one we brought with us from the 20th century. So let's hope we're all ready for whatever comes our way. So that is from zerohedge.com. I'll go ahead and grab that link and share it with you. I thought, I mean, I just saw the headline and thought this should be interesting. And actually, I did find it quite interesting. So what are you guys sharing over here? Yes, Beetle, we are being sprayed. That's called geoengineering. Because if you call it chemtrailing, they will poo-poo you as a tinfoil hatter. But if you call it geoengineering, that's an actual scientific phraseology kind of thing. And it sounds more highfalutin. And so, therefore, they are not as likely to poo-poo you. Because that's actually what they call it as well. It's geoengineering. Don't you know? Thanks loads. Cut it out. Y'all don't have a freaking clue what the repercussions of your quote unquote geo engineering are going to be. And yet, you continue. To me, it's like a scorched earth kind of mentality. These Nimrods, it's theirs. It's, you know, it's like the three year old. Mine, 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 mine. Arguing with the elder sibling that's saying, no, it's mine. But the three-year-old is going, no, mine, mine. I saw it. I touched it. It's mine. I just slobbered on it. It's mine. That's pretty much the way the leeches that be operate. That is their, their mentality. Not saying they're not devious. Not saying they're not incredibly inventive. Because have you ever seen a three-year-old try to get to the cookies up on the top shelf. I've seen this before. They are inventive little buggers. <laughs> it's really quite ingenious what they can pull off when you're not paying attention. Same thing holds true for these leeches at B. And they will continue to suck it from you. Your life force, your blood, your money, your hard work, your time, all of it. Everything that you allow them to do that with. They will. They will. Until you finally say enough and stop playing their games. And you take a little tip from Buckminster Fuller. If you do not like the existing reality, do not fight it. I'm paraphrasing here. Don't fight it because actually that's just feeding it with energy. You know, you're, it, even negative attention is still attention. 
So don't fight a reality that does not work for you. Instead, create another one that makes that one obsolete. Best course of action that I can think of, Buckminster Fuller was a pretty sharp individual coming up with that one. Now, I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking it's just about time for me to go and check out PIGazette.com and see what happened this date in history. Because it is the 20th of March, 2019. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see. Their word of the day is Electoral College. And I see all these people that are, and I, you know, I actually pondered it until I actually thought. You can ponder on things, but once you really start thinking about it, there is a difference between pondering and thinking. Sometimes we think too much. Sometimes we ponder too much and think too little. This is one of those things that I pondered the whole get rid of the Electoral College until I realized that it would go by the population bases. Really? We would have New York and California making the decisions for us. I don't think so. That is, if you actually believe your vote counts. If you actually still believe that. Um, yeah. Yeah. In any case, the word of the day is electoral college. I should say phrase of the day, but they have it as word of the day. It's a founding father mechanism that guarantees all states, large and small, a voice in the POTUS selections. I did say selections for a reason. In the quotable quotes section, these self-anointed intellectuals are people who think that those who believe in God and Jesus Christ, those who cling to their guns and their religion, are a lower form of animal life, while they themselves have no problem what ever accepting Dangleberry as a messiah and, in the past, defying the likes of Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton. Or deifying, excuse me, not defying, deifying. So let's face it, when you kneel in church, you're accepting that there is something greater and wiser than yourself in the universe. When, on the other hand, you kneel to a left-wing politician, you are me merely emulating Monica Lewinsky. Bam! That was Bert Prelutsky. Bam, Bert. Yeah, I hadn't really thought of it like that. I really, it's no wonder that, okay. <laughs> it's rather distasteful, don't you know? <laughs> oh, there's always more than one meaning in anything somebody says. Always. Uh, let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling, Grammy. So, what is this, boys? What do you got going on here? Retirement. This is from the pig, by the way. It's in their uh, tasty tidbits section. You can retire to Arizona where, number one, you are willing to park three blocks away from your house because you found shade. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you've experienced condensation on your rear end from the hot water in the toilet bowl. You can drive for four hours in one direction and never leave town. Uh huh. You uh you have over one hundred recipes for Mexican food. You know that dry heat is comparable to what hits you in the face when you open your oven door at five hundred degrees, and. The four seasons are tolerable, hot, really hot, and are you kidding me? Or you can retire to California. I mean, Cal no, I meant California. Where you can make over $450,000 and you still can't afford to buy a house. The fastest part of your commute is going down your driveway. Why do they call it a driveway? And where you drive is called a parkway. Uh, just confusing. Uh, you know how to eat an artichoke. I'm happy for you. That's another reason why I won't move to California. Um, when someone asks you how far something is, you tell them how long it will take to get there rather than how many miles away it is. <laughs> yeah, out here we tell you, you know where that cow stands at the corner? That's where you turn, right? Okay, and Booneyville humor. And lastly... The four seasons are fire, mud, or flood, mud, and drought. Or, or, 
you can retire to New York City where you can say the city and expect everyone to know that you mean Manhattan. You can get into a four-hour argument about how to get from Columbus Circle to Battery Park but can't find Wisconsin on a map. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. You think Central Park is nature. <laughs> There's trees and grass. You believe that being able to swear at people in their own language makes you multilingual. I'm impressed. Um, you've worn out the car horn if you have a car. And finally, you think eye contact is an act of aggression. I've actually run into people out here in the boonies that are, you know, passing through from places like this that when you make eye contact with them, they freaking freak out. They really, it's like, dude, seriously, eye contact out here in the boonies. It's a way of saying, hey, yo, I acknowledge that you exist. Nothing wrong with it. Or, hey, you can retire to meaner soda where you only have three spices salt pepper and ketchup Halloween costumes have a or have to fit over parkas you have 17 recipes for casserole I have more than that I'll have you know um, sexy lingerie is anything flannel with less than eight buttons <laughs> and the four seasons are almost winter winter still winter and road repair mm, yeah or you can retire to Texas where you can rent a movie and buy bait in the same store. Y'all is singular and all y'all is plural. He needed killing is a valid defense. It is, especially if it's some pervy bastard touching your child. It is. Um, everyone has two first names. Billy Bob and Jimmy Bob and Joe Bob and Betty Jean and Mary Beth. Everyone is either in yonder, over yonder, or at yonder. Uh huh. And you can say anything about anyone as long as you say, bless you, it's hot at the end. Or you could retire to Colorado where you carry your $3,000 mountain bike atop your $500 car. You tell your husband to pick up granola on his way home, so he stops at the daycare center. <laughs> a pass does not involve a football or dating, <laughs> but it does. It is preceded by puff puffs, don't you know? And the top of your head is bald, but you still have a ponytail. Yeah. Or finally. Miss Kate, this one's for you. You can retire to Florida. Florida. Where you eat dinner at 3.15 in the afternoon. All purchases include a coupon of some kind, even houses and cars. Everyone can recommend an excellent cardiologist, dermatologist, proctologist, po podiatrist, and orthopedist. Road construction never ends anywhere in the state. And cars in front of you up often appear to be driven by headless people. <laughs> I think I'll stay here and out in the middle of flyover country and cans ass. Don't you know? Wow. You know, descriptions like that, yeah, I ain't moving. I ain't moving. What was that, Moosey? <laughs> and yeah, Moose, it is true. It's, it's just freaking, it's cold up there. It's cold up there. Okay. This date in history, the 20th, 20th of March, 1345, the astronomically challenged rustics view Jupiter or Saturn-Jupiter-Mars conjunction with alarm and panic and managed to convince themselves that it caused a plague epidemic. And you know what? That was something I saw the other day. And I went, wow, huh, that's an excellent analogy there. They said, you know, all of these vaccine proponents all of these you must be vaccinated again you know for protection against any disease have you ever stopped to think the black plague went away without a vaccine that was the plague and for those of you that are you know still convinced that polio was a 
from an infectious or a virus or a disease like that. No, it was a dis-ease. It was a pollution issue. And the polio vaccine just furthers it. Just helps it along. Yeah, there's. look it up. Polio is not what you think it was. Look it up. Do your own research. Don't trust me. Hell, half the time I don't trust me. I've made some really bad decisions in my life, but they still got me where I am today, so I guess it wasn't too bad. Okay, and finally, this date in history, the 20th of March, 1760. Holy infernos, Batman! Great Fire of Boston reduces 349 buildings to ashes. Lisping Libtard Bun Ranger d dressed only in chaps deemed person of interest. For those of you that don't understand uh, Hambo lingo, that's uh, Bonnie Flank. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Hambo's affectionate description of Bonnie Flank. So, yeah, a bun ranger. <laughs> oh, Hambo and Porcus, you two are just a couple nut jobs. You know that, don't you? I love you anyway. So come on over to PIGazette.com if you want to get into something that's totally politically incorrect. And I'm sure there's, they're going to say something that'll piss you off or not your knickers or maybe just make you laugh so hard you get tears running down your legs. You never know. But check them out and tell them Grammy sent you. And maybe, just maybe, they won't squeal like a pig. Maybe. <laughs> okay, back to my pocket I go. Because I do, I may be able to actually get to one more thing before um, I'm just about out of, out of time. But, let's see. Yeah, we'll do the, we'll do the San Fran Nan just because it's a quickie. <laughs> -dum -dum -dum. Nancy Pelosi is escorted out of White House after showing up too drunk to speak. This is by um, April Matthews from ecomputerzone.com. Now, I did read the about on this web page, and I read the disclaimer and a few other things, and hey, it doesn't surprise me any. We'll just put that out there, okay? Now, sources inside the White House in, the si um, in a situation to neither affirm nor deny most reports have affirmed the most recent about San Fran Nan Pelosi, the Botox biatch. She was tips her tipsy journey only minutes prior. Mm -hmm. Now, Lawrence Darrell and his sibling, Darrell, both senior associates to lead speechwriter Sandy Bott, or Bat, or however you pronounce that, state that they saw Pelosi escorted out by Secret Service subsequent to showing up so flushed she could barely speak. That's what Daryl told the correspondent in the field. Daryl and his sibling Daryl. Two different, oh, Lawrence Daryl and Daryl. <laughs> This is a Bob Newhart thing. Seriously, I didn't read it. I just read the headline and went, <laughs> guffaw. So, Nancy came in and attempted to state a few things, yet simply continued making that face. Oh, have I seen that face? I've seen that face so often that that's why I'm working on the mental etch-a-sketch. To shake it out. Get that. You know, because some things, once they're seen, cannot be unseen. Now, what's more, they're resembled... A clicking clamor. I wonder if that meant her dentures were a little loose. <laughs> at that point, she tumbled down, and it looked possibly, or like she possibly peed a bit. <laughs> she had tears running down her legs. Now, the mystery security was everywhere on her correct snap, or on her correct snappy, and them folks hurled her like an unfortunate propensity. What? Uh, what? You guys, what? What the hell? Whatever. Now, Pelosi was left remaining on the South Lawn where she uh, figured moving toward Marine One would be a smart thought. And the chopper's pilot needed to stop her with physical restrictions. A zip tie. And escort her past the property line. Holy crap. The White House has renounced her qualifications and requested that her office please make an arrangement later on. 
Pelosi has a long history of plastered trips concealed by liberal press, who like to send their reality checkers to check whether a story is valid. Now, they call her office, and her office denies everything, naturally. And uh, before you know it, some people sh or some poor schlep on Facebook pitching trash into potato or to potatoes can't con contact his group of onlookers. I'm I'm sitting here going, what, 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 what? You guys are really, you talk weirder than I do. Now, huh. April Matthews is the chief publisher and marketing managing of ECZ's team, and she reported live from North Carolina during the 2016 election. Previously, she has covered the southern border illegal immigrants reporting service on our partners' websites like Faux News and Silly Con Valley. So, I'm wondering, is this an Onion-esque? It is too true, too good to be true, and yet... It does make sense. It really does. Now, I've already... Oh, my bandwidth limit exceeded. Really? Well, how dare I? Oh, well. I'm out of time anyway. So, thank you all for listening in on the Rocket Chair this evening on a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday coming to you from the middle of flyover country, also known as Grammy Land. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Also, please be sure to check back, check often, because uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Flash, somebody's going to be on with 20% off and because he's a Jewy guy. And then on Friday, you're going to have a Ponder Gander at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 2 Central Time. So... Yeah, once again, I'll be back, same batty time, same batty channel, on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>